Welcome to the PhoneArena.com video review of the Casio GZ1 Boulder. The Boulder is one of two new push-to-talk devices from Verizon Wireless. While both devices do pass military certifications, the Boulder is the more rough and tumble of the two, passing military 810F specifications for dust, shock resistance, and water resistance. In our time with the phone, we dunked it in a fish tank, threw it out of a second story window, and even ran over it with our car, and the phone passed with flying colors. There are two color options available. What you see here is obviously the orange and black. There's also a black and silver version. The black on the silver version has black where the orange is here, as well as on the back. The battery is black for both of them. On the black and silver version, the black is coated in soft touch paint, but in the orange, it's hard plastic. The phone is extremely well put together. However, to hold it in your hand, you never know it's so tough. The front of the phone contains a white on black circular LCD display. It also has a 1.3 megapixel camera with flash. The flash can actually be used as a fat flash light. And on that front screen, a digital compass can be brought up. The adventure is definitely geared more towards outdoorsy people. On the left side of the phone, you can see the small push to talk button up at the top. We're not crazy about this button. First off, it's not really easy to find with your hand. And second of all, even when you do find it, it's small. We much prefer the placement of traditional push to talk buttons, which would be in the middle of the phone and much larger. Instead, we find a volume rocker there and below that, a multifunction button. On the right side of the phone is the micro SD port. The micro SD card is extremely recessed, which is necessary because this port needs to be waterproof. The same thing can be said for the charging port on the bottom, which also doubles as the headset port. The back of the phone, the battery actually has a sliding lock. The battery comes off simply. It's a full piece, not a battery door with a battery. Though it looks like there are stereo speakers here, if you can see the right side, the only only has the real perforated holes. You probably can't read this label here, but it warns us that the ports on the phone, the micro SD, and the charging, both must be completely closed for the phone to maintain any water resistance. You'll also notice the two charging ports on the back. In a nice touch, the boulder comes with a desktop charging cradle, an accessory we're not used to seeing with Verizon phones these days. Opening the phone up reveals a small 2-inch QVGA display. At the bottom is a pretty traditional keypad. The keys aren't the greatest in the world. We often found ourselves pressing the wrong keys, and they don't have a whole lot of play though they do offer a reassuring click when pressed. The screen's crisp, but we would have liked to see it a little bigger. However, the G-Zone does have multimedia functions, but it's definitely not a fashion phone. It's purpose-built for the rough and tumble, and it serves that purpose well. There isn't anything special to say about the user interface on the Boulder. It does have an attractive skin, a couple of them actually. But in the end, it's still the same five-tab version of the Verizon interface that we've come to loathe. The Boulder does have a full set of multimedia features. It does not support Vcast TV, however, it does have Vcast video and Vcast music with Rhapsody service. It also features a 1.3 megapixel camera, a step up from the VGA camera found on the Type S, but a step down from the 2 megapixel camera found on the original Type V. Of course, the big draw for the phone is the push to talk service. We'll go ahead and contact it now here with one of our other demo units. In general, we found the push to talk service was okay. As you can see right now, we are in eVDO coverage. At the top up here, you can see the eVDO is black on white instead of the normal white on black, which means that we do have push to talk coverage as well. You can see there's a slight delay between the two phones that we're talking with, but not much. 
When we're in EVDO coverage, we found it was pretty decent of a service. We really disliked the sound, and there's no way to disable that. We didn't think we'd find a chirp that we disliked more than Nextel, but Verizon managed to find one. Our problems came in when reception was in fringe areas, or when we dropped down to 1x. In those times, the service could take up to 30 seconds for the call to connect, and at times, even after connected, there were delays of up to 15 seconds between the message going from one phone to the other. It doesn't sound like a big deal, but when you're used to the instant connection that Nextel always offers, it's a huge difference. We ran into a few other issues too, as there were times when we would have service but not be able to complete a call, or when the call would be completed but there was no audio. Overall, we really think that Verizon's run the course with their push to talk service. Without Nextel interoperability, the service will never take off. It's time for them to scrap it and go to something new. About the only thing that impressed us with the boulder was its toughness. The thing really can take just about anything you throw at it. However, call quality on the phone was only so-so. Reception was subpar to average at best. And the push to talk service, while not the phone's fault, is mediocre. If you're in need of a phone that can take extreme punishment, we'd highly recommend the Boulder. However, don't buy it for any other reason.